So our reading today is from Zechariah chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Listen to this. In that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem, for sin and for uncleanness. It shall be in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols from the land, and they shall no longer be remembered. I will also cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to depart from the land. It shall come to pass that if anyone still prophesies, then his father and mother who begot him will say to him, You shall not live, because you have spoken lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and mother who begot him shall thrust him through when he prophesies. So there comes a time of resolution when everything's been settled, everything's been proven and shown, it's time to just tuck everything in, and Zechariah speaks to us of that time. The fountain opened for cleansing from sin and uncleanness. It's talking about total cleansing. It's talking about total, total removal of sin, total removal of uncleanness. And that can only be one thing, right? That can only be Jesus. Rituals don't cleanse us. Symbols don't cleanse us. Jesus cleanses us, and Jesus is a person. He's a human person like you and I. He's also God. He is 100% fully God. And so the divine person, Jesus, he wants to come and he wants to be with us uh, through the day. He wants to be in our mind, in our heart. But because there's a fountain for cleansing, there's no guarantee that everybody will wash in it. Many people can walk right by the wash op options, uh, skip the showers keep in their sin. And God, of course, doesn't want that. He wants us all to be cleansed and be able to be, be in the kingdom. Everyone still gets to choose, and so some will not choose it. But, oh, he calls us, oh, please come, come and be cleansed. He was calling people to repentance in the time of Zechariah, and he's calling us to repentance. Too. Well, when this great controversy is all over between sin and evil, there'd be nobody worshiping any of these brick-and-mortar idols anymore. Uh, whether it's gold or silver or brick-and-mortar, everybody will know that ultimately we've come down to really it's the one true God versus, uh, versus self-service. Those are really the two, the two worship options. I'm going to worship me or I'm going to worship him. And uh, by then, everybody would be very clear that these other, these other things are just stop gaps. They're just, just pure fakery. So all the idols are going to be retired. They're, they're done. I won't be using those anymore. And then the other thing we have here will be false prophets. Uh, what use will there be for false prophets at that point? When everything comes down to the, the point of, of, of clarification, things are clarified, it's, it's choosing God or it's choosing self, uh, what do I choose? When we come to that spot, the false prophets are going to be in shame. You know, I, I see when I see it here, I think that God will bring them to repentance. Some will repent and turn, even though they've been false prophets, and be in the kingdom. And they'll be so ashamed of their false prophesying, they'll say, look, I'm, I'm not a prophet, I'm just, I'm just a farmer here, I'm just, I'm just a little guy. There's a, there's a humility kind of going on here. As we get into this clarified situation, there'd be no more tolerance for false prophets. There'd be no more need there because, again, things are becoming very clarified. So the false prophets, the devil uses them, they have a time and a role, but at some point they come to a spot where they're really not even tolerated anymore as the biblical command years ago was. You know, there's no place for them. We're not talking about the way things are today. We're talking about a, a, a rapid change that will come to where everything is totally clear who's who and what's what. And it's a matter of figuring out where do I stand. Well, when our father gave Jesus, his son, uh, a, a complete sacrifice was offered. And he's giving us a complete opportunity. Uh, it's not just sin being covered up. We're talking about a complete transformation. God wants to completely, utterly, totally transform your heart and mind. And uh, he doesn't want to stop short of that. Why would he? It's kind of like if you had cancer and the physician said, well, uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we try, let's, let's aim for curing 50, 55% on that cancer. How about that? Uh, you'd say, wait, well, wait, no, wait a minute, doctor. No, this, this is going to kill me. It's, it's all or nothing here. Either, either the cancer wins or, or the, the healing wins. And that's the way it is with the gospel. Either we allow God a complete win or, the, the, or sin will win. So we want to be, go fully onto God's side. This is a plan for complete transformation. And so by, by coming to him, by reading from the Bible every day, by praying, by, by being with other seekers of Jesus, I can be transformed through God's Holy Spirit. So that's the plan. That's the plan. Let's be about our Father's work. Mm -hmm.